Hey guys, before I get started, I'm just going to show you a quick video that uh, kind of introduces what, what I'm going to be talking about today. Um, and then uh, my plan is to kind of present and get, it, uh, get through it so that we can get to questions. Oops, that didn't work. By the way, that's my favorite picture of me. <laughs> When you walk through the doors, Pine City Basketball will be waiting for you. And that's where you'll find out that threes are good company. We like to play together and shoot a lot of threes. The Dragons have earned two reputations. One is one of the most efficient shooting high school teams in the country. We like to take high percentage shots, which include threes and layups. And the other as a system that's stymieing tradition. Well, I did get an email that told me I was ruining the game of basketball. <laughs> if you're going to shoot a 15-footer, why not back up a little more and shoot a three? I think other teams would view us pretty crazy. Um, I don't know. I hope they don't like playing against us. The method of getting to this point in Pine City is just as mad. All right, then you got to work together. Kyle Allen is the 29-year-old head coach controlling this experiment. If we're talking about keeping team chemistry. Breaking down basketball to a science. We talk about playing the percentages and everything we do. If you can get the boys to work on three-pointers and practice them and, and shoot them at a decent rate, it's a worth a better percentage because it's worth an extra point. Because numbers don't lie. At this little school, everything is put under the microscope. I don't think I've ever seen that many stats. From height? We don't have any guy over 6'1", six, 6'2". Six, Here. To hooping savvy, any variable that can be analyzed is. There are binders filled with handwritten notes. Everybody's got a clipboard and they have a job and we have plenty of stats. Same with practice. Managers have clipboards. You know, we've slowly added a little more every year. We had the self-evaluations last year um, for the boys. 20 for equipment. Along with measuring personal progress on paper and during practice. Out of 100 threes each day, um, you, keep, you write how many you make each day. You keep track of how many you shoot. Allen also invested most of his budget into a computer program that tracks every shot in a game. Kind of gives you your hot and cold spots. All in all, there are 100 plus stats being taken, all to collect data for a literal winning formula. So we have this equation he built. It's called the Valley Point System, and it's like rebounds and shots and shots missed. And it gives you a final letter grade for each player, and then a final letter grade for the team for each game. It's pretty hard to get an A in the game, but you got. Yeah, keep working and make those shots. We keep track of talking and practice. We keep track of uh, competition. What do all those numbers equate to? It equates to wins and losses, and it equates to probability. And if we can uh, be purposeful in trying to play the side of the positive probability, we feel like we can win more games. This process can be mind-boggling, but from all of the numbers they've gathered, the result and what they put on the court is as easy as it gets. Threes are worth more than twos, you know that. Simple math. This all may seem like money ball for high school hoops, but the big question is, is it paying off? We, we believe in it, so as long as we believe in it and coach believes in it, I think it's going to work out for us. Makes it. When it does work, it works. Sundays, the Dragons are on fire from three. But those stats can cool down too. It goes in bunches. You know, you may miss a couple threes, you may miss four or five in a row, and you're thinking, are we doing the right thing? It's all about taking the chance, and that risk is worth the reward to them. When people sometimes look at this and they think that we're trying to say 100% of the time this works, and that's not the case, that's not probability. Probability is that we think we've had more than a 50% chance, and that's what we're going to take. We're going to take the majority. The percentages will always even themselves out. And just maybe those shots from distance can help them go the distance. That's our goal every year. We want to put a year on the banner. You know, our goal is to win games. And we go one at a time, and we try to look at the numbers, and we try to let the numbers speak for themselves. So, uh... I'm Kyle Allen, the head coach at Pine City. Uh, we implemented this system a few years back, um, and this was the reason. Here was our reasoning to why. Uh, my first couple of years, my first year we went 5 and 22, 7 and 20, 12 and 14, and over the last several we've been 105 and 36. Um, so that was the, the change that we needed. Um, we needed to be more purposeful in what we were doing, uh, both from a coaching standpoint and a player standpoint. We wanted the players to have a clear 
purpose and goal of what we were trying to achieve. Um, and we wanted the coaches to be more purposeful in giving the players uh, what they needed to be successful. We also got a lot better at taking team pictures, as you can see from year one to now. Um, and zoomed in a little bit. Uh, we got them lined up a little better. So uh, we got our managers a little more dressed up now. As you can see, we have a lot of managers. Um, it, we need a lot of help to do this. Um, so we go out and recruit uh, students to come and help us do uh, all the number crunching and, and making sure that we have the information we need uh, to be successful. So basically our system is based on the Grinnell idea of lots of possessions. Um, we took the Grinnell system, we tried to make it work for a high school setting. Uh, Jack Taylor, who was the young man who scored the 138 points in one game, he was a high school teammate of mine. Um, and uh, I learned a lot of their system and we tried to change it to make, make it work at the high school level. Um, so on offense, we want to control pace, play fast, and space the floor. There's six perimeter spots that we want to control, um, both corners, uh, both wings, uh, free throw line extended, and then both lane lines, free throw lines running down. Uh, we want to have six and not five so that we can get two spots at the top and continue to spread the floor. Um, and then we want to attack the inside five feet and kind of leave everything else to no man land. Um, we crash the boards hard on the offensive end. We crash four on every shot um, because it's all about possessions. So we know that we're going to miss shots. We know that we're going to miss shots at a higher clip than a lot of teams because we're shooting so many threes. Um, so we want to give ourselves as many opportunities as possible. And then, of course, we shoot open threes and layups on the offensive end. The percentages kind of speak to themselves. Uh, we're 30% from three equals 45 from two, 34 equals 51, and 40% equals 60. So we try to sit right in that 34 to 35% uh, on the season uh, as a whole, which again <laughs> equals a 50% plus uh, shooting percentage uh, from two point line, which we struggle to do from the mid range. Um, defensively, we play the whole full court. Uh, again, we want to play fast and chaotic. We want to be everywhere and push pace as much as possible. We double at all opportunities. We front the post. We deny the middle. Um, we crash all five on the defensive glass. We don't leak because possessions are incredibly valuable, so we don't want to give extra possessions to the opposing team. Um, we want to create our offense from our defense, and the biggest thing that we change is charges are better than blocks. Um, we want to attempt charges, not attempt blocks because of fouls. Um, we feel that we will, uh, we've had more uh, or less fouls called against us for attempting a charge than attempting a block. So for instance, in 2017-18, we had 21 charges called uh, that we drew versus only 34 blocks, which was a great number for us. Um, so we want to make sure that everything we do uh, revolves around possessions. So we want to limit their possessions and force them to take shots that yield a low result where we want to have as many possessions as possible while yielding shots that give the highest uh, return, uh, which is open threes and layups. So if we look at like a, some shot charts, so this is the first chart over there is what I call the transitional years. Um, we were still shooting a lot of mid-range um, and not with a lot of success. Uh, and we started to listen to the numbers and what the numbers were telling us. And so from 2014 to 16 is on this side. This was our varsity in 2016, 17 as we really started to implement the system. And again, you can see a lot of gray area in here, um, but we want this to be empty. Um, a lot of times, and I have this conversation with my players a lot, because uh, they want to shoot mid-range because they're not allowed to, um, and for no other reason. So I always show them this. We call this the Noah Adams effect. Uh, he was a point guard of mine early on in my career, and we used to run a two-man motion, getting him the basketball right around here. And he was a pretty good mid-range shooter, and we shot 41% over those two years from that spot. And when you look at this, you would say that that is a better shot than this shot because we shot 29%. But the numbers say that actually this was a better shot because it yielded more points. Over 100 possessions, if we made 41 of 100, that would be 82 points. If we got 29 threes up out of 100, we would yield 87 points. Am I right on my math? Not a math teacher. Um, so you would, you would, am I close? Yeah. Okay. Uh, that would yield more points because it's worth an extra point. So we would rather take 29, make 29 threes than make 41 twos, in essence, is the theory. So the farther you move away from the basket, the lower your percentage goes. So that's why we're really trying to take shots right here and at our six perimeter spots on the outside. And then moving forward, we started keeping track of the young guys too, so the JV. 
So this would have been two years ago. Um, again, trying to have as little or none shots in our no man land as possible uh, while getting up as many around the rim and around the perimeter. And then this was last year's shot charts for the two. Um, and I do have one player that likes to shoot this shot, so we're working on that. <laughs> I told him if he shoots 60%, he can do it. But we're working on shooting 6% here first, so. Um, we also really believe in purposefulness. So the numbers have given us reason into what we're doing in all phases of the game. Um, we try to be as transparent as possible. We tell our parents and families everything. Um, and we make sure that everyone's aware of what we're trying to do. And then we try to find ways to put numbers to everything we do uh, to ensure that we are going about it in a non-biased fashion. Um, so everything connects back to our system and our goals and what we believe in um, on both ends of the court and off the court. Um, my biggest thing that I tell coaches is to track what you deem is important. So for us, talking is important. That was one of the first things we started tracking. Um, we found that there was a correlation between talking and energy and energy and success. So we started tracking talking just to say to the players that it's important to us. And that if it's important to us, we want you to do it. Um, <clears throat> so we've always had the problem where, not a problem, this is a great problem to have, where a player will say, well coach, if, if I talk a lot, I'm gonna win that competition that day. Yes, yes you are. Well, that's cheating. No, go do it. You know, that's what we want. We want you to talk. So the more you do it, the more you win. And we're telling you how to win the game. You know, go and talk. So we track what we deem as important. And we've even changed our roles and positions um, based on the numbers to reflect our system. Um, so we've come up with uh, different roles. Uh, we have mindset roles. We have substitutional roles. Uh, we have skill set roles. Um, and then we have changed our positions from the traditional to uh, creator, shooter, uh, post or big, and uh, tandem is what we have. So creator is the point guard, shooter is a shooter, uh, big is playing on the inside and guarding the inside, and then our tandem we created for the defensive end as the person who guards the opposing team's best player. So we're trying to make it so that everyone can fit into a type within our system so that their strengths can be utilized into what we do. Um, in practice, our big things that we keep track of is um, talking. So we have managers that come to every practice, and their job is to keep track of, of positive talking. Um, every manager has their own little say on what that looks like. Um, this year we're going to add touches to, to this. We're going to keep track of touches, so high fives, uh, attaboys, so on and so forth. Um, we're going to have it as two different categories. Um, Competition is something we keep track of, so we try to make everything end in a competition or, or a winner and, and non-winners in, in everything we do. So we'll keep track of competitions as well. Uh, rebounding is the single most important stat to our system because of possessions, um, because we need to have as many possessions as possible and because we want to limit their possessions. It's the number one thing in our program uh, that's important to us. So we emphasize that rebounding in everything we do. It's the number one stat we give. Um, and then we started a belt, uh, which we also keep track of. So we have a big wrestling belt that we bought uh, that goes to the practice player of the day. Um, so we keep track of how many times you're nominated. Uh, we usually have three to five that are nominated at the end of a practice based on the stats of the practice. And then they get a competition to see who gets it. So we want to know who's consistently getting nominated for the belt based on the numbers, and then who is consistently winning the belt based on the numbers. Uh, I talked about Grinnell a little bit. Uh, the big influence they've had on us is our uh, purposefulness into the offensive system. Um, so we do two drills. It's very simple. It's very simple drills. Grinnell, we call it Grinnell shooting, Mike and um, Grinnell shooting is when they get up their hundred shots during practice. So they shoot um, 15 from each corner, 20 from each wing, and 15 from each uh, lane line, uh, and or they're doing their Mike and progression, which is 45 seconds of Mike and 45 seconds of reverse Mike and. 45 seconds of two-ball mic and 45 seconds of two-ball reverse mic in. Um, and then we keep track of those numbers as the season goes on. Um, and so we get uh, their averages, we're getting their totals, we're watching it go. And we do things like top five, so we want to know who our top five shooters of the week are, top five finishers of the week are, 
Um, it's a lot like baseball. You get hot and cold streaks, same thing in basketball. Shooters get hot and cold. We want to try to get ahead of that. And we want to know who's coming into a hot streak and make sure we're emphasizing that. And we want to know who's coming into a cold streak and try to change it. So we try to use these numbers on a daily basis. Uh, we have them posted in the locker room. Everyone's aware of them um, to go through and, and uh, help us give us the numbers and the information we need to uh, move forward and make the best decisions. We uh, stole the value point system from Danny Miles, um, and then we changed it to our system. Um, so this is our, our revised uh, wording and, 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 and system that we do with the value point system. This is how we keep track of grades and games. So this is both individual and as a team. Um, same thing, I had a kid come up to me and say, Coach, if I got 12 rebounds, I'm almost guaranteed to get an A. My answer was, yes, please do that. I, I don't know why you're fighting me on this. This is a great thing. So uh, we really emphasize rebounds. We, we don't kill a kid if he misses a three because we want them shooting threes. So we've changed the system to make it fit to what we want. We want them getting lots of shots up. One of the hardest things we've had to do is change the mindset of the kids. Um, so in basketball, a lot of times the uh, goal of offense is a score. Our goal of offense is to get a shot up. Not turn it over, get a shot up, get a shot up that we want, and give ourselves the opportunity to get a rebound if, we, if and when we miss that shot. So we've really had to change their mindsets to understand uh, our goal is different than maybe other teams' goals. So we don't want to hurt a kid terribly if they miss a three-pointer, but if they miss a free throw, that's different because we expect to make our free throws at a high clip. So uh, we've tried to change it, change it so that it reflects our system, what we believe in, uh, what we want to do. Um, In-game, last year we kept tracking eight stats for us and three stats for the opposing team. Um, for us, we go through and we deem what's important. What's the most important stuff that we need to know about our players to help us win? And this is kind of a snapshot that we use that at, at halftime. So we keep track of giving up an offensive rebound, because that's obviously the most important thing for us. Uh, points given up, tips or extra possessions, charges taken and attempted, layups attempted and made, and then we added sharks. Uh, a lot of times they're called kills. Uh, but it's not good when the coach is yelling kill on the sideline, so we call them sharks. Um, basically, that's three possessions in a row when you get a stop. Um, and we found that if we can get three different times in a half, uh, where we have three possessions in a row with a stop, our winning percentage goes up like 90%. Um, so that's been a great thing we've added. For them, we keep track of who's turning the ball over for them, who's getting offensive rebounds for them, and their shot chart. Um, so we're really more focused on us and we are asking the other team to stop what we're doing instead of the other. So we know what we believe in, we know what we do, um, and we try to stay true to those things. Um, again, the important things for us to know about them are, uh, are, are those. And then uh, we do play call f effectiveness, which I don't think is anything crazy, but every call that we make offensively, defensively, out of bounds, transition, so on and so forth, that we just chart, did we run it, how many times you run it, was it successful? Um, so that we know what we're, what is working and what's not working um, throughout the game. And then we've asked the players to have a little more say in what they're doing. So we've taught them how to self-evaluate themselves. Um, so we have them evaluate themselves every day. And again, the things we want to know, effort, talking, execution, and your overall thought. It's not about how many shots you made. It's about are you executing? Are you bringing great energy? Um, are you talking? These are the things we can control. And if we can control those things, we feel like that puts us in a better place to be successful in everything else. So we try to be very purposeful and, tell, purposeful and tell them the boys exactly what is important to us, what we want them to do. We tell them all the time, we're giving you a cheat sheet. Your job is just to execute the cheat sheet. And if you do that, we're going to be successful. Um, I know I went quick. Last year I didn't have enough time for questions. Um, so I kind of wanted to open it up and, and, and answer any questions you guys have uh, on anything we do in Pine City. I had to ask on the sharp, do you adjust that for score? So for instance, like you were saying, like you're 90% effective, but do you do something like you get three sharks and a half, but you're at negative two at the end of the half, are you still at like 90% at the end of the game? Is yeah. It, does it vary on the score or is it like just you, you get it, it doesn't matter how close yeah, it is? Yeah, it doesn't matter how close, it's just win or loss. Um, and, and as we're going through, so even if we give up an offensive rebound and we still get the stop and they don't score, we count that as still that. So it's each possession that they have the ball before we get it. Um, but like I said, if we keep track, 
and we go through if we get three separate ones in each half. Um, so like a lot of times, you know, maybe we'll get five in a row. That still counts as one. Oh. Um, so it's three plus three different okay. times um, has been our number. Uh, Grant, you're the only probably team running this system, but if they had an opponent that kind of adjust the defense and say, let's just give them that mid-range shot, and we're going to, you know, we're going to have, I don't know, maybe a three-two type yep. defense. What happens with them? Because the kids are going to be. <laughs> tempted to get into that mid-range because it's just wide open. It's one of the funniest things you'll see in basketball when one of our kids catches at the mid-range post, turns and looks, and is wide open and doesn't know what to do. We've had kids travel. <laughs> <laughs> We've had kids if accidentally I was shoot it. Year, if I was a basketball coach, yep. that's how I would defend that. Yep. Um, so a lot of times we'll see it against a 2-3, and they'll leave the big at the bottom, and they'll leave the wings wide, and they will let us catch it right at the high post. Um, we just attack the basket. So okay. we, we, run, we run right to the basket, um, and we, they either collapse or they don't. So if they don't collapse, we're going to the rim. If they do collapse, we're, shooting, we're kicking it for a three. So the whole point is to not stay there, because that's like hot lava and run away from hot lava. <laughs> <laughs> Are you find, finding that you're able to play the same on the road as you do at home? Or do you have to like, adjust your defense because they get called more by the bounce? No, and the big part of that has been depth. So. We try to run at least 10 to 12 players every game. Um, and this system allows us to do that. And that was something we wanted as a high school coach. Part of this is experience. And we want as many kids to be a part of the experience as possible. Um, so to be able to do that, we wanted to play a lot of players. Um, and that kind of came back to the roles. So uh, for instance, our mindset roles are, I, I don't know if I made up these up. These are bad names. Dude, energizer, glue guy, leader, and winner. And that's what their personality is, more or less, that the team needs of them. And then we have anchor, breaker, reinforcement, and situation playing time. So your anchor is your traditional starters. Breakers are who comes in for the starters. Reinforcement is injury and or foul trouble. And then situationals is based on the, 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 the time and possession. So we had a player who came out late to basketball, but he was 6'8". You don't want to not use a 6'8 kid. So he was our defensive out-of-bounds specialist. So anytime the other team was inbound on the ball, he went and checked in. He knew his position. And he eventually grew. But we want to try to find something for everyone. So to combat foul trouble, we try to have depth. Um, and we, we hope they call lots of fouls. We're OK with that. Um, we want to be the more aggressive team. We want to play our depth against your depth. And if they don't call fouls, then we still want to be the most aggressive team. We feel we'll be the, end up on the better end, regardless if they call fouls. So we try to take that out of the system, out of the game. It's not something we can control. So we try to combat it regardless of what the outcome will be. Do you ever like deviate from the system <laughs> in, in like a late game situation? Um, no, <laughs> I, I have, and it's never worked. And like, it's always one of those things where you did it and you thought it was a really good idea, and then it ended up being a catastrophe. Like, you know, it was the end of the game, and instead of doing this, we did this, and then of course we turned it over, or something just terrible. We. Our kids struggle to play outside of our system. So, um, you know, we have a lot of players that play AAU or play other things. Coaches call me like, gosh, your kids shoot a lot. And I'm like, yeah, isn't that awesome? I mean, it's great. Um, you know, it's a, it's a kid's dream to play in our system. Coach doesn't yell at you for shooting. Coach yells at you for not shooting. So um, I would say that our kids have been trained to do it this way. So to ask them to do something differently would be something that they just wouldn't be able to execute maybe greatly. So pretty much every time down court, you're looking for a three. Three or a layup. Three or a layup. Yep. Uh, but really a three, if you can help it. Yep. OK. So um, are you calling plays? Like so-and-so is the guy we want to get the first look, and he's covered. So, so that will go into our top five of the week. So we know who has the hot hand going into the week. Um, a lot of times, we'll run sets for a guy. If a guy makes a three, we want to get him a shot the next time down. If he makes two, he's definitely getting one the next time down. Um, my rule with my guys is, is I want them to run in transition. So if they run in transition, I won't call a play. And they like that, because then they're just playing basketball. So that encourages them to get a stop. and encourages them to get the ball out quick. If they can beat me up the floor before I can yell something, then they just get to play basketball. Otherwise, they know I'm going to start yelling something. Uh, this might be a stupid question, but no stupid questions. I teach high school. Parents, 
Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, so part of the reason we put this in was because of parents. I mean, not they just want what's best for their kid. And as a 22-year-old head coach when I started, um, a lot of times what I thought wasn't maybe right in the eyes of the community, especially when you're losing games. Um, so I had to come up with something that proved or showcased what I was believing in. Um, my first year we went 5-22, and 22, and I started an eighth grader at point guard because I thought he was the second best player. But that was just my opinion. <laughs> there was nothing there that was proving it. As the kid shot 9% from outside, you know, it made me look like a genius. Um, but uh, so we started doing this to be transparent with the families, to be transparent with the community, to be transparent with the administration, to say, this is why we're doing it, and this showcases and supports what we're doing. So um, that's why I say you always want to make sure you know what's important to you and find the numbers that are going to sh help show or not show that what you're doing is correct. Um, the numbers continue to support that our system is, is what is good for us. It might not be good for someone else. Um, and we make adjustments every year based on personnel. You know, I would love to be able to just run this, this, and this, but sometimes our personnel doesn't allow for that. So we have to put in a zone or we have to put in a zone press or we have to do something, but we never go away from, we're going to shoot this shot and this shot, we're going to play full court, we're going to worry about rebounding, that doesn't change. The sets might change offensively and defensively, um, rotations change, um, but we try to keep it as, as streamlined as possible. Kyle, this just maybe help me compliment what you're doing, because I love, love the style of what you're doing. Um, years ago, I, I was listening to a clinic and I instituted this particular um, skill in and all the, and your emphasis on rebounding it, it'll really I think fit in with, with your system is anytime uh, you got an offensive rebound depending where you are on the floor the tendency of a lot of the other defense is going to go down double down and rake down so if not they're going to have to coach that you know if they're going to stay tight on their guy that's another piece of practice for them but once we put this in, is it we got an offensive rebound, we reversed it out and over to the other side of the floor. You probably do that. That's where you'll get the open three on the other side of the floor. So the verbal was always shot shows opposite off the offensive rebound. It's one thing you go out with it, then they all run the close out, and you make that extra pass over the other side. There's where you have your. The three. highest percentage threes come off of offensive rebounds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so our, our players are trained to kick it out. Now, if a team does go the opposite, of course, yes. that's why we're there for the layup. Yep. So that's the whole idea of the spacing is is we want to make the defense decide, are you going to try to take away the middle or are you going to try to take away the outside? I was just going to ask because you didn't have it in your presentation off the top of your head. Do you know how the average points per game scored by your team changed from before the system? <laughs> I, I can tell you our old goal versus our new goal. Uh, when I first started our first three years, our goal was to score more than 55 and hold them under 50. We've been top five in the state in points per game in the last four or five years. So we're averaging in the 80s now. Yeah, go ahead. So um, obviously a lot of teams are pushing towards this. And like in the NBA, the Rockets are using it. Yeah, they keep stealing my ideas. <laughs> they, uh, they're emphasizing free throws a lot because it's the most like efficient shot yep. per possession. Yep. And I know there's controversy aside with the flopping, but has that ever come up with your team just trying to get free throws? Yeah, because the problem is we don't shoot as many free throws as most teams because of the amount of jumpers we shoot. Um, and that's something that we've, uh, the way that we combat that is to try to enforce our kids to go to the rim more. Uh, so that we can hopefully draw more fouls. But the hope is that we're getting in the bonus quicker because of our chaos on both teams and both sides. Um, and then again, your depth. So we want our ninth guy shooting free throws and their ninth guy shooting free throws. Um, but yeah, we have a lot of games where we have lopsided free throws where we're shooting 12 and the other team's shooting 25 or 30 um, because we don't go to the rim as much. And that's something that we have to combat as a team. So I coach little kids, fifth graders, yep. three, sixth graders, and I don't like it at all when they stand right out there because their shot mechanics are garbage. Yep. So are your seventh graders doing this, or are you working on shot mechanics when they start coming up? Yep, so we, so we focus on shot mechanics. So we have uh, <clears throat> skill set goals for grade levels, third grade through varsity, 
that build off of each other um, and where we want them to start and where we want them to do and, and do what. Um, so the biggest thing for us though is we can fix shop mechanic and we can work on that as they're coming up. We want to make sure they have that mindset. Um, so we, we don't have our third graders chucking up threes at practice. Um, we have them working on shot mechanic in our fourth grade and our fifth grade. But as they're getting to sixth and seventh grade, we want them shooting and knowing that it might not go in, but the thought process is we can fix a shot mechanic and eventually it's going to go in. Yeah. But we don't want them to turn down shots. Um, it's that whole uh, confidence in shooting. Even if it doesn't go in. So we, we talk about celebrating every three. Whether it goes in or not, we celebrate that we got the shot. <laughs> because the goal is to get a shot. The goal isn't to score. Scoring will come if we achieve our goal. Our goal is to shoot, get a shot up. The scoring will come. Two questions on drawing fouls. Uh, first of all, will your players tend to pass the ball away if they're, they think they're too covered, or would they try to draw a, a foul on a three? Or they're going to pass the ball. They're going to pass the ball. Yep. Okay. Because we try not to take the contested one. I mean, we obviously do, but um, we always, you know, the extra pass philosophy of okay. getting one more. Okay, great. And do you ever start out a game a little differently and have them go to the basket a lot to try to get the other team in fouls to give you more space? Yep, and that will be based on matchups, and that's where I love <laughs> that it gives me the versatility to do which one or the other. So, like, I always think of, like, in comparison to the NFL, do you run the ball to set up the pass or do you pass the ball to set up the run? We have the option to do both. Are we going to attack the rim to set up the three or are we going to shoot the three to open up the lane? And so we try to do it based on matchups. So like last year, we played a team with a seven-footer. We are going to play on the outside, make him come out, and then hopefully hopefully get the inside afterwards. We just have, I think we made two two-pointers in that game. And we just we couldn't get to the rim. He was very good. <laughs> and they were very good. We did. So how we did hard win. it was for you to get that out of your mouth to the two-pointer? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Two. I think we made two that game. They were very good. So as other teams just built the defense for you. So I'm going to take my big guy and put him right in front of the rim. Yep. And then I'm going to take the other four and put him on the arc. Yep. And we've seen that. And that's you where. Can, you can beat it. Sometimes. Well, sometimes. <laughs> uh, that's where we want to attack. So now we're going to put your big on an island. If you're going to put your big on an island, we're going to attack that big. Yeah. And hopefully, if we can run two at the basket, yeah. okay. if now, if that wing drops, that's where we have to have the kick out. So it's that counter counter punch okay. where. If we run two at your one, if you sink, we okay. should have now the advantage on the outside. Where can we create the advantage number wise? All right, thank you so much. Thanks, guys.